The author is no stranger to numerical synchronicity, and has been followed by the famous 1111 time code and its many permutations for years. Examples would include, 111,910, 11,103, 111,777, and so on. The numbers have branched out into other areas. For example, 3,333 hits, or, 2,222 likes, appearing on YouTube videos, or, 444 pounds and 4 pence appearing on a financial document. Here are some of the numerical synchronicities that were captured by the author, from internet video sites over the past few years. In the months running up to the 23rd of June Brexit voting day in the UK, the author received an increasing and persistent amount of 116-911 master code numbers on his PC boot screen. The day after the 23rd of June, the frequency of these numbers dropped immediately, returning to what could be called a normal level. At the time of writing, the PC boot screen 116-911 master code numbers are rare but the author does see these number patterns in abundance elsewhere in his environment. The author is apolitical, and did not take part in Brexit, although he does acknowledge its political and economic significance. Britain voted to leave the European Union on 23 June 2016. The author speculates that links between Brexit and the 116-911 master code, hints that the leave result could have been an act of salvation, or represent the aversion of a catastrophe. Alternatively, the numbers might simply be the outward projection of the author's unconscious fears, relating to the Brexit event. The 116-911 master code continues to haunt the author, but not from his PC boot screen. The next video shows what happened when he hit the pause button on his computer, halfway through watching, the net, after he decided to break for a cup of tea. This type of event happens with monotonous regularity in the author's life, especially when his mind is distracted by entertainment. The codes are almost always based around a minimum of two number ones, with at least a three or a six somewhere in the mix. Prior to 2016, the codes were predominantly of the three variant. The video you are now watching was not staged for this presentation. The author simply paused the video to break for a cup of tea and noticed the 11131 code. The gravestone you are now looking at, appeared outside Creative Memorials in May 2016, and remained there throughout June and July. The stone shows the 90-year gap, 
between the Titanic disaster's origin in 1911, and the World Trade Center disaster in 2001. These numbers all derive from the 116-911 master code, except for the 2, which probably comes from the 222 synchronicity. The name on the stone is George King, which reversed is King George. Dashwood lived during the reign of King George II, and King George III. There are royal symbols on either side of the name, including a castle with three towers. Here's another stone photographed shortly after its arrival, on 12 July 2016. The 16th of January 1991, translates to, 16-1, 1991, or, 161191. The 2nd of April 1922, translates to, 2, Dash 4, dash 1922, or 241922. Thus, the 116 911 master code appears exclusively on the date of death, and the 222 synchronicity appears on the date of birth, with a spare 19 and a 4 added into the mix. The appearance of these synchronicities together suggests that the stone contains a highly significant and important message. But what is that message? For Horus, Read Horus the Egyptian deity, whose parents were Isis and Osiris. It is believed that the Christian belief system, was based on the Egyptian belief system, and that Jesus is Horus under a different name. The father of Jesus, Joseph, was a tecton. The word tecton, translates to either carpenter, stonemason, or builder. In Western Christianity, Joseph is considered a carpenter who made a living working with wood. At the age of 12, Jesus would have learned his father's trade, and become a carpenter. The name, Horus, a, carpenter, translates to, Jesus, a, carpenter, or just, Jesus the carpenter. Outwardly, the message refers to the Christianized versions of the concepts of kingship, leadership, and salvation. The concept of the father, patriarchy, and paternity are here as well, Again these are concepts used in Christianity. Has Jesus, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, just saved humanity, in a kind of reverse 9-11 event in the summer of 2016? Whatever the message is, it's a significant one, and could contain elements of a conspiratorial act. Perhaps we are being told that Christianity is itself an act of conspiracy. Could the stone be telling us two different messages simultaneously? The author can only guess, at what the talking tombstones of creative memorials are really saying. The following photograph was taken on the 26th of October 2016, and once again appeared outside creative memorials. All the numbers on the stone, derive from the 116-911 master code, with a 22 thrown in. This time we can see a 666 number cluster to the left, and its inversion, a 999 number cluster to the right. In Christian End Times mythology, John of Patmos describes the first beast of Revelation, as a leopard-like creature, that rises up out of the sea, and is associated with the number 666. The number 666 is supposed to represent man. The researcher, Mark Passio, claims that the word Bill, originates from the word Baal, and that Baal was an ancient solar deity. The viewer may be surprised to learn, that the researcher and author, John Lam Lash, considers the beast of Revelation, to be the pagan earth goddess Sophia. Either way, the name Bill Pooler, in association with the number 666, could allude to some form of deity emerging from a body of water, in an end times scenario. All three stones you have just seen, have two things in common. They all show numerology derived from the 116-911 master code, and they all show lesser degrees of numerology derived from the 222 synchronicity. These two synchronistic factors, indicate that the messages contained in their inscriptions, are relevant to this investigation. But where do these messages come from? Do they come from the dead themselves? Do they come from the reality the dead dwell in? Why would something, or someone, in another reality, be sending messages into this reality. Are these messages directed specifically at the author, or are they for other people who have the eyes to see? 
Is this some kind of an emergency spirit messaging service for the observant few? Perhaps the veil between the world of the living, and the world of the dead, is thin enough at creative memorials, for messages to get through all year round, and not just at Halloween.